Tell us a little bit about your involvement with the festival now. Well, it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey for me. I first became aware of Seafest through my relationship with Vera and was asked to uh, speak on the business conference panel, the same thing going on this morning, about a year ago now, which is kind of unbelievable. And, um, and then through that, I developed a great relationship with Vera, who has founded the festival and really essentially is a, is a one-woman show with putting this whole thing together, which is extraordinary when you consider our opening night. We completely sold out the WGA Theater and had a great film, and it's, it's really unbelievable. Um, but Vera approached me and, and wanted the perspective that I that I have to, to be on the board, and I enthusiastically said sure. And uh, since then, it's just been a great relationship in helping steer this great film festival in the right direction. And what's, what's so amazing is you, you look back at a, a year since I was last here with you, and so much has changed, but so much also stays the same. And when you look at just this region, Southeast Europe, and where the world's attention is today with everything going on in Ukraine and, and just the relevance of these voices in this region and how it's not just this isolated place in the world that people might know a few countries in, but it's now something that has a direct effect on all of us and the stability of the region um, and the voices there. And you know, this festival, I think, has done just a fantastic job at letting those voices be heard and will continue to do so. You, know, you bring something that really is interesting. We focus on Hollywood as an entertainment industry. But the media in itself, you know, all over the world is not playing a real uh, window. It's bringing a real window to everything that's happening. Like we're talking briefly about, you know, talking about what's happening in the Ukraine in that area. We're talking about what's happening in all of the Arab world. But in itself, as, as someone who is very much embedded in this industry, and your perspective as an attorney and also as, a, as, a, as an agent, all these things that you do, what do you think has changed from last year to now? Like you said, it's an evolving thing constantly. Yep. Well, when I'm not an agent, I am a business affairs executive at an agency, so I always like making that distinction. Um, but no, I think, I think the importance of the individual voice um, has never been more important than it is today. The ability of one person, one place in the world, to be able to speak up and do something, um, and, then, and then share that with the rest of the world and the ramifications that can have, not just culturally, not just emotionally, not just personally, but also geopolitically, um, has become pretty profound. And I think as, as media and technology continue to develop, as we have this great proliferation of filmmaking, right now these days where basically anyone can do it. You know, we were talking earlier about all these great programs that you have to help out, um, you know, children at the early ages start developing an interest and a proficiency in the space. And it's it's really incredible that, um, you know, films are not just things that are made in studios anymore, but they're made in people's garages and basements. And, and when done right and when done properly, they can have a, a pretty amazing effect and a great audience. What, what is, uh, in going back now to the business area, you know, one of the things also so now it goes from making something that can change the world, that can change moments, on the business side. What are the things that you keep telling people? I know you have your, your great uh, uh, program at UCLA. Yep. What are the two things or... You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, because there's so many things. What do you? Well, the most important thing is to empower yourself, and the most important thing is, as as anyone in the in the entertainment space, is to never define yourself as just a producer, as just an actor, as just a writer. But you really have to develop all of these skills simultaneously, because the multiple platforms which are out there, and the multiple ways that one needs to be thinking about the space. Um, I think so many people get into entertainment through passion, um, and that needs to be there. I think you can easily tell when you look at a film, when you look at a project, if it's something that came out of passion or something which simply came out of money and came out of finances. But at the same time, even when that passion is there, it's important to understand the business. It's important to learn. It's important to continue to take classes. And, you know, and I, you know, a big part of what I do, my hobby is really teaching. And I've taught for 10 years and now have this uh, online entertainment law class, which is really geared not just at U.S. filmmakers, but really international filmmakers to expose them to what they need to know to be successful so when they have that passion they have that great project they can take it to the finish line um, and there's a sophistication there that most people in America and particularly outside of America simply don't have access to and you know my class is entertainment law exposed that certainly isn't a commercial for that but it's it's an important thing to check out and be aware of because the more you understand things and especially with filmmaking you know the one thing I always tell producers is always think about distribution in reverse 
Too many filmmakers have a great project, they have a great script, they get some money, and they think we're going to make something fantastic. And then they make the film, and only then, after the film is made, do they really start thinking about the distribution side. How much do I really need, uh, you know, for, for a minimum guarantee to to make this work out? How how am I going to be made whole after two, three, sometimes five or ten years of the filmmaking process? So when you think about those things up front, sure that can change the direction of the film, but it can do so in a way which can make it more marketable and, and reach out to a broader audience. I think one of the most interesting trends that we're seeing these days is crowd financing. Um, the ability of not just raising money through private equity or through rebates and subsidies in different territories, which of course are the two main ways these days, getting foreign pre-sales. People can sometimes do that, but that whole model is really not what it used to be. Um, but through reaching out and finding an audience sometimes even before the film is even made and you know just like anything anytime someone has a great project they always think oh everyone in the world is gonna love this and that's the biggest mistake anytime as an executive I hear that all the red flags start going up the irony is the more narrow of an audience you have the more successful the film is probably gonna be because you have this built-in excitement and you may talk about a narrow audience well if it's 1% or a half of a percent of the population that's still a huge amount of people who are going to be energized to go see a film and you start even looking at distribution models of um, different companies who are looking to buy films and sometimes they're now not giving us the upfront money that they used to but in exchange for that they're coming at all these very aggressive alternative um, uh, plans to go and get the film out there to make it relevant to make people talking about it not just through buying commercials or billboards but other kind of uh, social media and marketing. Do you think, you know, going through, you know, thank God I've been around long enough that I can understand about 20% of everything that's out there, but the question is, do you think people are still thinking that they should make this very simple, the very simplistic perception, make a film, sell it, and they don't really, you know, like you're saying, is that it is really complex. Right. It's, it's amazing how little people know about the filmmaking process, even those people who have been deeply entrenched in it. And, um, you know, I think it's because our industry has become so compartmentalized. People think, hey, I'm a producer, but when it comes to the law stuff, I don't need to worry about that. I'll get a lawyer. When it comes to, when it comes to distribution, I don't need to worry about that. I'll find some expert to help me out. And so everyone has been so used to spe the, the specialization and then outsourcing all these other components, which is really a mistake. Sure, you need other specialists to help out with those things, but you also need to have that same level of sophistication to be able to make the right choices and steer the project in the right direction. I mean, the thing that comes up to me all the time when I start hearing about people in development, sometimes they're developing a project for years, and then they come and they ask me maybe the simplest of questions, of rights questions, which I can answer in a couple seconds, which then literally sometimes derails an entire project, which is heartbreaking, simply because they didn't really care to understand what you can do with someone else's likeness, or really some of the broad strokes of the First Amendment, or what copyright means, and what you can and cannot use. And so, again, you don't need to be an expert on all these things, but to have an understanding of, to be able to raise the red flag, and to, to steer through and navigate all the waters um, is something that you, as a filmmaker, have to be in charge of. And you have other people on your ship who can help navigate, but you have to have that vision and be able to really keep the momentum going in the right direction. Okay, which I think that that's why I constantly do put out the information about your uh, your, your particular course yep. because I think it's extremely necessary. It's not. It's one of those things that is not really a luxury. I think it's a necessity. That's why I think that. It's very important. When is your next? Uh... The class is going on all the time. Um, I'm actually really excited. I, in addition to teaching at UCLA, I'm actually teaching at Emerson College, which is the premier performing arts college in Boston. Just opened up an amazing new campus in Los Angeles, and I'm going to be teaching there um, at the end of May. And then my online class is a continual thing that goes on every uh, every three months. And I think the thing which is exciting about that is I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I've written a whole bunch of books, and I really approach the law from an artist perspective. Of trying to reach out and tell people the things that they need to know for their career as opposed to just speaking to a very insular crowd of lawyers who get fired up over issues which can be very exciting but sometimes have very little relevance to the practical world of filmmaking. Thank you for your time. You gotta go back in there. Thank you so much.